So last night, news broke that Errol Spence Jr. has indeed activated his rematch clause to run it back with Terence Crawford and potentially capture his belts or recapture his belts and the undisputed crown at £147. Now the reason why I say potentially is I'm led to believe that Errol Spence Jr. is hoping that the fight can be made at £154. I don't think he really has too much interest in going back down to 147 and run it back at 147. However, being a loser, I don't think he has a say in the matter and I think it's completely up to Terence Crawford. I, mean, I don't really know if that's true or not, but I do believe I've read that somewhere and it sounds about right. If he's the winner, he's going to have certain perks regarding the rematch and if he gets to choose the weight, that sounds about right to me. I could be wrong, but it is what it is. As for the rematch itself, it's not a bigger fight as it was first time round. It probably won't do the numbers or even go close to the numbers that it done first time round because people have seen it and it was pretty conclusive. Let's be honest. I mean, Terence Crawford basically done a number on him and it's it's kind of taken the mystery around the fight the aura of the whole undisputed or two unbeaten champions now it's one unbeaten champion against someone that he just bashed up it's still going to do decent numbers but i don't think it's be anywhere near the first one but that being said me personally i am happy that it was called like that he activated the rematch clause purely because like terence crawford has basically been talking about everybody else other than errol spence errol spence has been quiet it seems the longer he stood quiet the more terence crawford linked himself with other people pretty much everybody other than errol spence i will also say this though i did just say i I don't think it's to be as big a fight as it was first time around but that being said when the news broke last night it was almost like a red carpet event the amount of people that started talking about it and doing lives and you know speculating about what's coming next and this that and the other people are still interested in it i just don't think it's to be as big as it was the first time around as for the speculation regarding the weight i do personally think that terence crawford will try and make it 154 pound because he's targeting other people he's thinking longer term so in my opinion he's thinking easy work errol spence i'll take him at 154 pound i'll get him out of the way then i've made the weight i've had one fight at the weight then I've got the door open to go for Jamal Charlo and become free weight undisputed champion. That's probably what he's thinking. But there's like a lot of things got to fall into place for that to happen. And the first thing that needs to happen for him to get undisputed against Jamal Charlo or Canelo Alvarez is essentially he has to beat Errol Spence again. Now, going off the back of that performance first time round, I don't think he's going to have any real trouble against Errol Spence Jr. If I'm being honest with you, I don't think that Errol Spence Jr. was like washed up in the ring or felt the age or felt the effects of losing the weight i personally think that errol spence was good at the weight he got whooped now he has to say it was the weight otherwise he's going to basically admit that he got whooped by the better man so with him insisting that taking the fight 154 pounds for me it's more of a an excuse if you know what i mean or a reason for just to put doubts in people's minds gives them you know something to talk about people can then turn around and say oh well errol spence jr was drained for the first fight this time around he's going to come in fresh it's going to be a different result People can keep dreaming. We all saw what we saw. I don't think there's any other way this fight's going to go, but it is what it is. I can understand why people will try and find reasons for, to, to back their guy or find a reason why their guy might do something different this time. And Fight Hype had a live last night when the news was announced, and their title for the video was something along the lines of rematch announced or rematch clause activated, and the winner gets Canelo Alvarez. Now, I don't know if Canelo Alvarez is on board, but I think it may be true or there may be some truth to that. So it's looking like these two will fight and the winner will get Canelo. If not Canelo, maybe then Jamel Charlo. And the whole reason for that is that they're going to be two big fights, two high profile fights. And then the winner gets each other. It makes the third fight an even bigger fight, if you know what I mean. So the two winners will fight each other. It should in theory be a massive fight. And that's probably what they're angling for. But I've noticed something a little bit weird with the PBC these days. Or PBC fighters. And I don't know if anyone else picked up on it or if I'm just reaching here. But you guys let me know what you think. Like, there seems to be this influx of call outs regarding PBC fighters. Now previously I didn't pick up on it too much. I didn't notice too many call outs. But as of recently it seems like there's even more call outs of people changing their minds about fights. And going in different directions. It always seems to be like PBC related. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let me try and break it down. Because just hearing myself saying that it doesn't really make too much sense. But you've got the whole David Benavidez situation. He's been calling Canelo out for God knows how long. And suddenly now Canelo is with the PBC. He's saying I'm going to let the fight happen organically. He's not really trying to call him out. He was saying that he was going to make a fight with Dimitris Andre. Andre's going on record saying, what's the delay? I'm ready to go. Sign the contract kind of thing. He's ignoring the call out from David Morrow Jr. Who's gone from calling Benavidez out to radio silence. Jamel Charlo's talking about Crawford even though he's fighting Canelo. Jamal Charlo's talking about Canelo Alvarez even though he's fighting his demons. Canelo's open to fighting anyone other than the guy he's meant to be fighting at the PBC. And even he's talking about like guys like Terence Crawford. And then up until yesterday, pretty much Terence Crawford was talking about everybody other than the guy he's meant to be fighting. Now maybe this is just stuff that goes on and normally I'm not paying attention. But it does feel like ever since like Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia had that fight and that door kind of opened. It's almost given me the impression that 
people are now on the impression that they, the PBC are open for business kind of thing. I mean, I don't know. It just seems like there's more call outs than there usually is regarding these guys. Even like Danny Jacobs saying he wants Jamal Charlo. Danny Jacobs is irrelevant, but for some reason he thinks he can just call out these guys and the fights will get made. I don't know. It just seems a bit unusual to me. I don't remember it being like this a year ago, but maybe I've got it wrong. But it does seem like there's more call outs, more activity on social media with name dropping regarding PBC fighters. Nothing significant. I just thought I'd see if anyone else picked up on it. That's all I got for this one, guys. The rematch clause has been activated. It's not really a highly anticipated rematch from where I'm sitting, but I'm going to tune in. We waited long enough for the first one. We may as well watch the second one, I guess. That's all I got for this one guys like comment share subscribe but don't i catch you on next one love